Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you're a regular to this channel, well, first off, you rock. But second off, you probably already know that I have done an ongoing series of uh, game engines by programming languages. I broke down some of the most popular game engines out there. Specifically, I covered C and C++. Again, you can see all the various different game engines that are available that are currently under development, including language bindings, etc. So I did C++, I did Hacks, I did Lua, I did Python, I did C Sharp, I did Rust, and I did JavaScript, TypeScript, and I think that might be the extent of them. And yeah, the one I did not cover, however, is this one, Go. And people said, will you cover Go? And I'm kind of like, um, there's not a lot of options out there for Go. So if you want to use Go for game development, there is, again, not a ton of options out there. There are bindings for popular libraries, such as Raylib, which has bindings for everything, Ditto for SDL. On top of that, there's actually even a GD extension for using Go inside of the Godot game engine. Go and Godot, they kind of just go together. They already share, like, uh, I don't know, 40% of a name. So there are options out there for using Go for game development. But when it comes to game engines, really, there's one. And today, we're going to talk about that one game engine. Now, they've got to be honest here, I don't really, uh, well, actually, I don't know Go at all. So I'm kind of going to give you a really great demonstration here, because this is not a programming language I know. And one of the reasons why I don't really know Go is because, quite frankly, it's not really used that much in game engines. But if you're interested in checking out Go for game development, the game engine you're going to want to know about is the, uh, they say, AB10 Gin. AB10 Gin. I call it EBIT engine, makes more sense to me, but their pronunciation here is AB10 Gin. So the AB10 Gin uh, is an open source game engine, super, super straightforward and simple in how it does things. Uh, it is documented, there are a ton of examples available, uh, but the idea behind it is the dead simple aspect, everything is an image, the screen is an image, the data is an image, off-screen items are images, everything is an image. I've seen other game engines definitely do this in the past, but it does make working with things very um, determined you know what you're going to be dealing with, so you can reuse the same logic and algorithms on the screen, on the ice, on the um, the items or sprites you're displaying, etc. Uh, it's also cross-platform, so it's available for Windows, Mac, Linux, FreeBSD, web browsers through WebAssembly, uh, Android, and iOS. Uh, implemented pure Go on Windows, so Windows developers do not need to install a C compiler. Nintendo Switch is also supported. It is high performance. It is production ready. Bear's Restaurant is actually what I used for the thumbnail of this particular video. So if you're interested in learning more about the eBit Engine, it is available online at ebitengine.org. Now, if you want to go ahead and get started with it, go ahead, click here, and it will bring you to their GitHub repository. What we're going to want to do is get and clone that. By the way, if you like it, do drop them a star. As you can see, they've got 12,000 stars already. So this is a well-known project in the world of Go Game Engines. Uh, so uh, it's released. It's updated very constantly. So you see the last update here was nine hours ago as of the time of recording. Uh, this is available under the Apache 2.0 license, which is a very liberal license in terms of what you can do. But if you want to go ahead and get started with this guy, just go here, grab the repository, and then fire up your terminal of choice. So in this case, I am on Windows. I can use the standard terminal like so. And let's just go ahead. It has to go in the, the temp directory because everything has to go in the temp directory, right? So git clone and then boom. Now I've already installed the Go tool chain. Uh, if you have not done this already, do so. Make sure that it does get installed to your system path. You can check to see if it is there by typing the words Go followed by version. And then you can see, boom, I have Go installed. Now that I've got this here, it will be in a directory called eBitten, so, or a bit, whatever the hell pronunciation they want to go with. And we'll just switch into that. So here we go. And this is the director. The key thing that you're going to want to do is go into this examples folder. But here, let me just go ahead and open this one up in Visual Studio Code, first of all. And then you're going to want to go into the examples folder. This is the key way to learn this. And there is good documentation on top of that as well. But you can see here, there are a ton of examples available. So we're going to go ahead and check one of them out. A simple platformer. So platformer right there. So let's switch into platformer like so. And we'll just go ahead and run it. So just go run. Oh, I suppose I should show you this. Here in the directory, you'll notice there is a single file called main.go. And we're going to do go run main.go. It's going to be the same for all of these examples, by the way. And there's an example for pretty much everything you could possibly want to do. So you can see it's a simple platformer, very simple, single screen, uh, no real sprite animations going on here, handles input, jumping. And then there you see. So this is an example of what this guy can do. Again, there are a ton of examples here to get you up and going. Uh, there is like a, an Angry Birds clone here, uh, 2048 clone. Uh, we've got things for handling the camera. So Flappy is the Flappy Birds clone there. Let's let's just show that one quickly too. So CD dot dot flap, CD dot dot CD Flappy. And again, it is called main.go. So just go main.go. 
Uh, oh, go run main.go. And here you can see a Flappy Birds clone in action, which by the way, I am absolutely garbage at Flappy Bird games. But you get an idea, full game implementation. So that thing's got like collision detection, audio playing, input handling, graphics drawing, and so on. Boom. All right, so here we go. We're inside of Visual Studio Code. Again, examples. So this is the full code for the project. If you want to jump into its actual implementation, probably overkill. Let's instead go take a look at that platformer example because it was uh, as simple and straightforward as it goes. A single file to learn from. Again, I don't know Go. So I can just tell you, like, here's what it looks like. It's pretty standard. You know, you got your... your definitions, uh, various different callback functions. So the initialization when you're first created. And once again, everything is an image. So it treat everything like an image. Drawing things on screen is like drawing one image to another image. Uh, here is your game loop, your update call. Pretty straightforward. Here is for drawing the graphics on the screen. And again, the screen is just an image and you can draw images onto the screen image. Very straightforward with how it works. Here is your update that is called as part of your game. So again, this is your main game loop. You're going to get called every single frame. Uh, here you're, again, you're doing keyboard checking. So you've got this a button and then all the methods that are available for it. By the way, there is full uh, Go language support available for Visual Studio Code. So it's all here if you want to go ahead and check it out and various other functions that are there. So there is that simple platformer. A little bit more complex was that Angry Birds we looked at here, or sorry, Flappy Birds over here. Let's go check that one out. And here you go. So why has Go not taken off as a game development language? Um, I don't know. There's a couple of different things I've heard. Um, garbage collection issues, just like C Sharp. So it's one thing that you have to work around. It is a garbage collected language. I've also heard that its ability to call um, like a runtime call to like C and C++ code is not the most performant thing ever. Those are a few things that I've seen. Uh, and sometimes just a language doesn't take off in a certain platform. This is used a lot of times like on server side functionality. You know, go, um, Google uses Go heavily. But in the world of game development, not many people are using uh, the Go language, which again, uh, reading the code, it looks fine and straightforward. But these are also fairly simple games. So I don't know if you're going to run into performance issues or otherwise. I would actually be interested in hearing from you in the comments down below. If you use Go, why? And then there's another, like there's some very game specific domain languages that you could use like um, Zig or Beef, etc. Of course, people are using Rust. And of course, you've got C++, C Sharp, etc. that are already the popular candidates. So eventually, you're just going to have languages that just don't really make sense to use for it, or they just don't have a community for doing so. So what we've got here again, this is the eBitten engine. It is free, open source, super simple to work with uh, under the Apache 2 license. If you want to learn more about it, you head on over to the eBit, or I guess, sorry, AB Tengen, which again, that pronunciation does not work for me, but uh, it's available at eBit engine.org. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the predominant Go-based game engine out there. And that would exactly be why when I covered all the various different programming languages by game, game engines by programming language like this list here, that is why you don't see Go down here because it would basically be this video <laughs> and then a handful of language bindings out there. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that is the eBit engine. Um, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.